Uh, my good friend Bud Flagg, who was a great warrior, I know exactly what he would want us to do, which is what we're doing now, which is going after these people and making sure it never happens again. And so those are the kind of things I think about looking out that window, making the most of today, maybe giving back, educating others, and then live life to the fullest. As for the Pentagon, there are no longer any visible scars from September 11, 2001. But that tragic event has become an important part of her history. So have the amazing efforts of the thousands of men and women who joined together in the days and years since to make the Pentagon better and stronger than ever. For the two and a half million men and women who are part of the U.S. Defense Department, most of the decisions that determine the course of their lives happen here in what is the largest low-rise office building in the world. While that alone sounds impressive, it's the details of the building that bring home just how big it really is. For example, the building takes up 29 acres, and it costs around $29 million to power it each year. There are 17 and a half miles of corridors, nearly 8,000 windows, and a huge center courtyard. This whole area is about five and a half acres big, and it is currently the largest snow hat, no salute zone, or in the continental United States. It's also the only military installation not owned by one of the services. By law, the Pentagon falls under the authority of the Secretary of Defense. Michael Donnelly is the man chosen to see it runs right. The Pentagon operates in many ways like an island in northern Virginia. It is a huge building, it makes a huge footprint in northern Virginia, uh, but because it is federal property, it is surrounded by parking lots, uh, major thoroughfares. It takes time to get in and out of the Pentagon. For that reason, the building has always had a variety of services within its walls. Now this whole area, what does it look like, you guys? There you go, like a mall, right? And again, this was developed so that Pentagon personnel, such as myself, wouldn't have to leave the building to take care of personal business during the workday. So that's why we have medical and dental facilities, post office banks, credit unions, DMVs, barber shops, and while well, we even have floral shops in here, okay? Uh, so whatever you might need, you can get it right here in the Pentagon. The other major feature here uh, in this island environment is that the metro station and the bus platforms constitute the largest transportation center in northern Virginia. So we're constantly balancing security and access to the Pentagon. The building is so large it takes time to learn your way around. You will see people walking down a hallway and then all of a sudden turn around and do a 180 go another 50 or 100 meters and then stop again and, and look at a piece of paper and try to figure out where they are and where they need to go. All right, guys, go ahead and please follow me this way. At this time, we're going down the stairs. Everybody, please follow, follow me this way. Lance Corporal Angel Cuevas is one of the Pentagon's many tour guides. He's a pro at getting around. Now, the first time I was here, I was lost for about an hour, and I was just walking around with the map, and I was like, you know, and then finally I saw another Marine. I was like, hey, Marine, help me out. He's like, all right, double dog, what you want to do is you want to go that way, you want to go this way, and this is how the Pentagon set up. So he basically gave me the rundown. But yeah, it's kind of hard for someone that's never ever been here before. Once you understand how the Pentagon is laid out, it's very easy to get around, and it's designed in a very efficient way to allow you to get to all parts of the building very quickly. Getting around the building really is straightforward, usually. But since renovation of the building began in 1998, those in the area under construction have had to move to other locations, both in and outside of the building. And people have often had to take longer routes to their usual destinations because of construction detours. And it's been admittedly a significant inconvenience for the workforce. Uh, but I think they understand uh, the benefits of the renovation and what they're getting from it in the end. What they're getting is better safety and security features, as well as modern upgrades to work areas and much-needed amenities. Work on three of the building's five wedges is nearly finished. Renovation of the fourth is now in full swing. We're doing a million square feet in about a year and a half. We've got over 700 tradespeople on this construction site. 
And so just organizing all of that, that all becomes very intense. And we are putting in the infrastructure in uh, for the future. So any changes in the future, any of the uh, new requirements coming in, we should be able to support that. After more than a decade of lessons learned during these renovations, the construction crews have a clear idea of what it will take to finish wedges 4 and 5 by 2011. We are on schedule to complete this program and, uh, and, and we, are, we are going to make it. As for the impact of the renovations on the amount of space available, it's turned out to be, I think, about a wash. Uh, when the renovation was uh, started, there was anticipation, more anticipation that we would be losing space. But the nearly four million square feet of office space in the building has been filled to capacity for years. For that reason, steps were taken over the last year to sort out who all the tenants in the building are. The results of that occupancy study will help leaders determine who needs to stay in the Pentagon and who should go. It also provided us a, a clear picture of how to get to closure on the renovation and the moves. So it's been a very important uh, foundational project for other work that's still ahead of us. I think the main challenge that, uh, that we face in, in trying to run the building is to keep the, the uh, building operations, uh, the renovation, the security, and the IT uh, functions of the building all working together in sync. And keeping so many people and processes in sync is no small thing. The Pentagon's building staff alone, those with full-time jobs keeping things like air, heat, and water running smoothly, add up to more than 500 people. We enable uh, the people who work here uh, to support our men and women in the field and to take care of the nation's business. Uh, so we're, we feel very closely tied to the mission of the department and to the support of its leadership. And uh, we're honored to be part of that. Steve Carter has been a part of the building management team for 24 years. I may leave the Pentagon physically, but the Pentagon will never leave me. Uh, it's indelibly marked, and I think it is in everyone's heart, especially the ones that were here on 9-11. We watched what she can go through and how she can withstand an absolute attack and yet still be there to support all the people that needed it. I may be half a world away, but when you see the Pentagon come on the nightly news and it says the Pentagon says, everyone here knows exactly what that means. We're one of the few buildings in the world that speak, and she speaks volumes. From the unprecedented speed of its construction during the World War II years to the incredible one-year reconstruction after the attack on 9-11, to efforts to bring the building up to present-day standards without slowing down operations, the Pentagon has become more than a symbol of the United States military might. It's also an example of what American determination and ingenuity can achieve. I'm Master Sergeant Daniela Marcus, and this has been Recon.